Hi, this is Janos, it is Real World Audio, and we are going to look at void pipes and transmission lines. When do you want to choose them, and what's the difference between base reflex cabinets? And when will they work better for you, and when will they make your life literal hell? So, here it goes. Uh, the uh, void pipes, they require a big room so if you have and and it's not doesn't need to be necessarily a big room but you need a single dimension in your room that's at least uh, five meters uh, that's that's like 16 feet or something like that and and then the other dimension of the room can be narrow but you need a length at least that length because the sound frequencies have wavelength to them and uh, and the void pipes and transmission lines work by exciting the the waves in your room and if there is no <laughs> waves to excite in your room they will not work so that's why uh, if you have a void pipe and you put it in a, in a tiny small room the base collapses and that's what I experienced with my void pipes the ones that you have been seeing before uh, uh, throughout the 20 plus years I had those void pipes I have tried them in over a dozen different rooms vastly different in size in shape in uh, treatment and uh, and for example when I tried it in a really tiny room that was like eight feet wide and 12 feet long it sounded like an am radio like zero bass nothing under 200 hertz it's it's that bad and then when people try that out at home they say oh void pipes suck they, i i will never ever look at one in my life just forget it but my response for you for all of you is that uh you failed because it cannot work, it cannot reproduce bass when there is no wavelength to support it. So that's how void pipes work. It, imagine when you go to the gym and you see those people tugging on the ropes. That's what the void pipe is doing. So how does the void pipe look like? That was the bass reflex. This is the traditional void, void pipe as Paul Void built it. So basically, it's much taller than uh, the typical base reflex cabinet. So if this would be like a big floor standard base reflex, that's your void pipe. It's as tall as you are. And, um, and there is the sound wave that is, uh, the pressure wave that's reproduced inside the cabinet. So it's riding up and down, up and down. And that's one quarter of the wave of the frequency that it can reproduce. So here's the loudspeaker tugging at the air inside the cabinet. That's like your arm moving the rope. That's the loudspeaker. And, uh, and, 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 or I would say that that's, this is your wrist. <laughs> and, and the air column in the loudspeaker, that's the length of your arm. So like when you are doing this tugging thing, then you will notice that, that the rope is making these sine wave shape, these coiling, snaking movements. And, and the size of those snaking movements is determined by the length of your arm. Guys with longer arm will make longer sine waves. And, and if you have a kid doing it, then they will be smaller coils. And that's what, how the void pipe works. The taller your pipe is, the longer waves it can excite. And, uh, and basically how deep your void pipe uh, goes down is defined by its height. And here at the bottom there is the opening, there is the front of the void pipe. We could call it a port, but it's not a typical port. It has nothing to do with the base reflex port, which is a, a narrow window of pressure. So a base reflex port is only open for an octave around the tuning frequency, the void pipe port does not have a tuning frequency and it's open for all the air pressure and the entire frequency range that's riding, that's being amplified inside the cabinet. 
So basically that's one fourth, the arm tugging at the, at the waves in your room, and you need four times the length for your room as the height of your pipe is to, uh, to give it the ability to have as much base as possible. So if you have a two meter tall void pipe, then you need an eight meter long room to hear its full base capacity. And if you put it to a room half size of that, then you are going to miss the lowest octave that that void pipe can reproduce. I hope this really sits for everyone, is that uh, you need a, a big room for a void pipe to hear its bass capacity. And when you put them in a big room, you will be astonished that a single driver can reproduce a, a complete Baroque church organ. So for example, my void pipe uh, that I have shown, it is capable of going down to the C1 note. So like that, that 31.4 hertz note on a Baroque organ, it is fully capable to reproduce it with the uh, ease and beauty and, and the whole entire tonal upper harmonics properly built and it's just absolutely beautiful. But when you cram it into a tiny room or maybe you are listening to it near field in a small room, it's not going to happen. Maybe it's, it's not even reproducing a hundred hertz note anymore because it cannot excite the waves in your room. So my recommendation to get a void pipe cabinet is when you have at least one dimension in your room that's long enough. And I'm saying that if you have like a, a 14, 15, 16 feet long room, uh, something like four and a half meters in one dimension of the room, it's, it's going to give you enough base. But to hear the full glory, you need like at least a seven meter long room, like a 20 feet long room that has one dimension that's, that's 20 feet. And then it will be a transformative experience. And then I would say you don't need a subwoofer. And if you try to mate it with a subwoofer, you can't because uh, no matter what subwoofer you try, it's going to build the sound quality down. Yes, you will have more quantity. <laughs> but the quality just <laughs> crap out uh, because it, uh, yeah, anyway, that's a story for another video. Uh, however, we will be, of course, uh, uh, running into a problem that that's, that's a really large room requirement. And usually for most void pipes, if you have a uh, just an eight inch diameter single driver driving it, uh, like a 20 foot long room, you are not going to get excessive sound pressure levels in it. However, if you are not a junkie for exploding your ears with sound, uh, I can tell you that in my room, when I had the void pipes, which was about, it was almost, uh, about nine meters in length. So it was like nine meters by, by almost five. So it was, it was a really large room, like uh, 45 square meters or so, like, like almost 500 square feet room. That's pretty big one. In that room, it was able to recreate jazz at the pawn shop at the volume that was about three to five dB quieter than a live jazz club performance. And, and I can tell that because I did the direct comparison. So I went to my friend Tatosh playing at the Dragon upstairs and got home and put on jazz at the pawn shop. And, and I had the exact same ambient experience, but a little lower volume. And actually I was much happier with that three to five dB lower volume because it did not make, it was easier on the ears. It caused less fatigue than the live performance. And for me that gets all my thumbs up. Uh, but there's some of you who whose priority is to get it at the 
exact same SPL as you experience it at the jazz club. And then this will not be sufficient because it will not be able to create that volume. And if you want to create that volume, then you need to shrink the size of your room. But if you are shrinking the size of your room, you are losing the ability to create the bottom octave. So the void pipe does not work in that scenario. So the, uh, the scenario where it works best is if you have a very big room and you don't want excessive volume. You just want normal volume and you want a happy long audiophile life when even in your 80s and 90s your ears are still intact. Uh, because you did not blow it from all that excessive volume. That's perfect. And also if you have like a medium large room, you will miss that lowest octave uh, from the pipes, but they will still uh, be able to present you with a very beautiful sound, with high integrity. And if you want to, you can crank them high enough to, to give you that, that extra couple dB uh, that you want to rock your house with. Now, what happens when you have that uh, biggish size room, which is not that extra large, that like uh, 20 foot or longer, but it's, it's maybe, let's say, like a, a 30 square meter room, like a, like a four by four by six or five five meters by six meters like something like that size between somewhere between 20 square meters to 30 square meters so you don't have a single dimension in your room to be able to create that bottom octave but you want to get that bottom octave that's when a mass loaded transmission line enters the picture because the mass loading, uh, we, we put in a device in the void pipe that acts as a pressure converter. So we are basically taking that quarter wave length that rides here and, and we are applying a choking point on it and that choking point will help to couple the energy that's riding in the low frequencies to the air so so the air can be energized and um, and here what we have here this is not yet a difference between a, a transmission line and then the mass loaded transmission line so this is now just a, a straight void pipe which is a transmission line and a folded void pipe so basically if here you would cut off this half and just flip it upside down you see this thing is the same thing. It's still this, this piece, but the top is being folded over in the back. So that's one way how you can get a space economy. And instead of a loudspeaker that's like six feet or two meters tall, it becomes a, a one meter tall loudspeaker, but it still behaves as a void pipe because you still have the pressure wave riding from here to there. Bang, 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 bang. It just makes a turn in the middle. And here it's, it just freely goes up and down, but they do the same thing. Now, if for your folded pipe you have the same big opening, the same big mouth, then the frequencies can directly couple to the room. And if your room has the wavelength available so that, you, that your loudspeaker can tug on those waves, then it will excite those waves. And that happens with both this scenario and that scenario. So when you see that big opening there, that is uh, comparable or similar to the size of the driver surface, that's when you have a transmission line. And if it looks like this, then it's called a void pipe. If it looks like this, it's called a folded void pipe or a TQWP. And uh, now, how do we transform these to a mass loaded transition line. So to do that, we need to narrow down the size of this opening. So instead of having a nice big port, it, it will have a, a small port basically. So let me just draw, because I cannot see from the back. 
So if this same loudspeaker, we are looking at the front, this is how it looks like from the front. So you have the driver here and a massive opening in the bottom. Now this is when it works as a transmission line. So when we put, instead of that, we put a port, we close down the opening to the size of the port. So basically what we are doing, we are pressurizing the inside. So instead of being able to freely commute without any restrictions on the pressure, we are restricting the pressure. So we are creating a, a high pressure, low pressure zone inside the cabinet compared to your room. And, and because of that pressurization, now it's going to be able to excite lower frequencies than what your room can support. So let me draw your room here. And now this is the longest wavelength your room, your room can support. Actually, that's the longest full wave, but your room is fully capable of supporting the lowest half wave. So if the lowest half wave your room can support, let's say it's 37 hertz. Uh, good luck reading that. It's supposed to be 37 hertz written there. In that case, if you have the void pipe or the regular transmission line, then it can excite that wave in your room and you have the highest quality 37 hertz wave that can be reproduced by a loudspeaker. Now, if you want something lower than that, you're going to run into difficulties. And um, however, it still can be done, but in that case, the wave will not be able to form in your room and you are going to have just these pressure fluctuations. So your room is going to be pressurized instead of having a sound wave. Now, when a room is pressurized, you have a very different feel. You, the ear perceives pressurized sound very differently from uh, normal, normally excited waves. And when you have a real life acoustic music performance, it's not pressurized. That, that's like the normal sound waves being tugged by the instruments and giving you uh, a natural wave production. And that's true for church organs as well. So if you have a baroque organ, it does not pressurize the cathedral. It tugs on the waves. So the, the, the organ pipes are void pipes. So that's why the void pipe is the best freaking loudspeaker to reproduce organ sound because it's exactly built like a pipe. Well, not exactly, but it uses the same principle and it tugs on the waves the exact same method a church organ pipe does it. And of course it looks a little different because you need one loudspeaker to reproduce all of the pipes. And, and in an organ you have each pipe is specialized, specialized only for a single purpose. So it's a little bit better than having a, a void pipe reproduce all of them for you. But this is the next best thing if you want to reproduce it. A bass reflex cabinet does something completely different to the sound to reproduce church organ and it's not going to sound nearly the same. So going back to mass loading your transmission line. So here we go, we have our transmission line whether as a folded pipe or as a straight pipe. If we are choking it down with a port, now basically we are putting a port on a void pipe. So we are coming back of creating a base reflex cabinet. So essentially an MLTL cabinet, which is a mass loaded transmission line, is basically a base, base reflex cabinet. But there is one gigantic difference between the two, and that gigantic difference is in a base response cabinet, in the inside there is chaos, absolute total mayhem, because the, the sound waves that are generated by the driver, by the internal pressure, they just bouncing back and forth, up and down, everywhere, and there is just chaos, a lot of... Uh, crazy resonances I did, the cabinets getting excited, the walls getting excited, and it, it just total 
uh, there, there's an expression, it's called clusterfuck. That's what, what's exploding when the base energy hits it. And when you have a mass loaded transmission line, it's very different. What happens here is that those uh, sound waves, which correspond to the quarter wave of the sound or shorter waves, they are organized into this pressure front, riding back and forth, back and forth. So, for example, if your cabinet can support uh, like down to 30 hertz waves, then all the energy that's, rip that's at that pushed with your cone to the cabinet, which is 30 hertz or higher, it's going to get organized as the pressure wave fluctuating between here and there. Bang, 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 bang. And what the uh, port does here is to convert that energy to exit from your speaker when it conforms to the energy that the port lets out. And uh, we are continuing with that in the next video because I am hitting my, my, my time limit here <laughs> and your boredom limit. So thank you for tuning in. Have a most amazing audio journey and put on our music, listen to some fun and, and just choose your right speakers. Bye bye.